we need to record this. So anyway, thanks for coming. We're so glad you're here for paint night. And um, does anybody have any questions about what you're doing? Is everybody tracing your bunny on to start with? Everybody good with that? Okay, so is there anybody that does not have your bunny traced on? Did somebody just barely walk in? Yeah, you probably don't have your bunny traced on yet. Um, um, I'm so glad that a couple people called this week and said, hey, I thought I registered or I meant to register and didn't. And I told them they could come anyway because there are a few people who always don't show. And I'm glad I told them they could come. Were anybody here, people that I told last minute that you could come? No, did those people not come either? <laughs> Rude. So rude. Oh, anyway, so when we did this during pandemic, um, when Lori and I were sneaking into the library masked, doing Zoom calls for people to do paint night and putting together kits for people to take, um, Eventbrite, which is where the platform we do it on, we register on, um, started advertising free events like all over the place, not just locally, wherever you were. And so we started getting friends joining us for paint night from all over the country and then eventually other countries. So we would like fill up that 100 people, like we would have 70 or 80 at least people doing paint night with us every time because we had people from all over the country who were joining us. Jean, I think you were one of the people who came a lot during that time. Um, we had people from Canada. We had people from, I'm trying to think what other countries. I know the craziest one was Tasmania. Somebody joined us from Tasmania. Yeah. Time to do paint night. Yeah. So Lori is famous all, all over the East Coast <laughs> as an awesome paint night teacher. Um, and so I'm not, um, so yeah, so and I have people regularly sending me emails still saying, did I miss? When's the next paint night? Because since we did them every single month. And then because we had extra funding, COVID funding to do it then, this is probably one of the most expensive programs we do in the library for all of the materials. And so couldn't keep doing them every single month. Not only are they expensive, they're pretty labor intensive to put all this stuff together, right? You know. It's a lot of work, but we love doing it because everybody- Hey, is that Bonnie from Florida? Oh, which Bonnie is, I, there are two Bonnies that used to join us all the time. I don't know which Bonnie it is on here. I should look at the, at the list. We had friends from, we, a lot of people from New York, um, New York, Florida, Colorado, California, lots of people. New John. Jersey. Any, New, New Jersey. Jersey. Bonnie. Okay. Yeah. So we have friends all over that still want to join us for paint night, which is why we're glad Lori's still doing it. So she'll do it over Zoom. And then our our pandemic friends can still join us. Anyway, okay. Did I give every did I talk long enough to get everybody mostly traced yep. your bunny on your canvas now? Okay. Thank you for being at paint night. We're so glad you're all here. Um if you're on Zoom, you can pin Lori and make her um show up that's what i'm gonna do and pop out the um chat unless i need it so for those of you on zoom if you guys have questions there are only a handful of you so you're welcome to just unmute and ask your question if you need to um but if you would prefer not to unmute if you want to stay completely anonymous behind your <laughs> black screens over there um then you're welcome to to pop a comment and to chat and i'll try and pay attention um and i can ask Lori if you have comments in the chat that you um need asking and obviously if you're in person then you can just yell out your questions and i will repeat them to Lori too if she doesn't hear what you're asking all right any questions before hey. i turn the time over to Lori? everybody doing good yeah okay well now i will turn the time over to Lori to teach us about bad hair day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and welcome to everybody. Can they hear me good? Yep, Wendy? everybody here okay, okay, great. Okay, so I am just gonna say hi and then I'm changing cameras here. So <clears throat> here we are. So if you printed off the drawing and you don't want to freehand it and you don't have carbon paper, you simply turn it over to the back 
rub your pencil on the lines on the back, lay it down on your canvas and trace it. Make your own carbon paper. Because this is eight by 11 and our canvases are eight by 10, you have to align like the top right corner. So it'll hang off the bottom because we want, and then trace it because we want to have our drawing so that you have lots of room up here for the ears, for the hair. So we're gonna start with the background. So I have a mix of turquoise and I'm gonna put a little white in it. And I'm using my larger brush. So I am going to mix Sorry, up no, some color. Bad. There we go. I don't wanna put it on solid. It's a little too, too dark, but I want to mix quite a bit of it. And like a lot of paintings that we do, it is not gonna look good till it's all done. And so we are putting things on in layers. So you're going to, and acrylic paint dries quickly. So you can't diddle daddle along with it. So I've mixed my color and I'm going to take, and I'm just going to paint my background around, around my, um, my rabbit here. And it's okay if it's not uh, totally, when it dries, you'll be able to see streaks and stuff, but that's okay because this is our first, our first layer and we're going to put two layers on the background eventually. So you just want to add your background color. I'm just using the edge of my brush. My brush is loaded with paint. And I'm just using the edge of my brush to go along my pencil line. And then once I get around my pencil line, I can just make little X's with my brush to get the area covered. Okay. And if you need more paint, you just keep bringing in a little more white, a little of the background color, whatever color you're using. I'm holding my canvas. I, I don't really paint on an easel. So I'm holding my canvas and just uh, turning it as I'm, as I'm painting it. Remember, this is our first coat, so the color is going to vary, and maybe you'll be able to see your canvas still a little bit, a little bit under it. So uh, you can see as I come up on this side, I've got light and dark here, so I'm just going to kind of mix these together. So how's everybody doing there, Wendy? We're all good. They're very studious. They're quiet. They're tonight. very, they're not. Okay. They're very focused. Yes, they are. I can tell they're holding On their that, breath. So we have to remind everybody quiet. to breathe. <laughs> a little zen tangle here. You have to take a little breath. Don't, don't have a death grip on your, on your brush. <laughs> Relax your shoulders. Don't get too yeah, tired. yeah. You don't need to be too serious about it. There are no mistakes. There are no mistakes. All about Ross. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. By acrylic paint dries so quickly that by the time you get around your rabbit, the where you started will be dry. So we're gonna just get the background done. And then don't fuss with it because remember we'll be coming back and and doing another layer on it later on in the in the class.
class. So you have a cup of water. Um, when it becomes muddy, you can just ask Camille or, or Wendy to, to um, give, get, dump it and get some fresh water. But once you're done with your background color, you're going to wash your brush off, swish it around in your water, pat it on your paper towel, and then we're gonna lay, lay that brush down because we're done with uh, the large the large brush for the background. Because my acrylic dries so quickly, I haven't put my whole palette out. So I would suggest those of you that are in person there that have have your paint in little cups, don't open them all up right now. We'll just open them as we need them. And our next our next step is going to be painting the pink in in the bunny's ears. So we're going to use a little red. We just need a minute before we move on though. Okay. We're still I didn't realize we were painting around the bunny and I gave them one inch instead of half inch brushes because I thought we were just painting the whole background. And so they're they're oh, trying that's to, okay. They're trying to paint around their bunny with two big brushes. Um so I have Camille handing out like smaller angle brushes so that if they need to get in between the ears or around, then they Yeah, can. and especially don't worry about this. This is where a little chick is gonna be sitting. Oh, true. So not to be too not to be too fussy about that, and really you don't have to be too fussy about anything because we are going to the ears are have gray around them, so we're going to be going in and painting gray along the edge there, which will clean up any of the background color that you have put there. I know most of our paintings, we've done the whole background and then and then done what the the focus. This one is a little different. So for those of you in person, this is probably the half inch like the half inch brush that you had? Is this like their brush that they had, the half inch? They had an inch one. So I we just handed them a, a quarter or a half inch one so that they could get around a little bit more detailed. And I was just an angle brush, but it's similar to that. Okay. How are we doing? Is everybody pretty, pretty close to getting their backgrounds filled in? No, okay. Good. Okay, we're going to we're, we're, we're going to mix. Okay, we're going to mix pink. So we're going to have white with a little, just a little bit of red in it, not too dark pink. We want a light pink, which pink is it is called a tint because it's white plus plus red. Red plus white would make a tint. Mm -hmm. So I'm just playing with the white and the red right now to get a, a soft pink color. A little bit of red goes a long way. Yep, it's very powerful. And I'm using I'm using the half inch brush, so sm smaller. And your background color should be dry, so not to worry about it. And remember the ears have a gray, have a gray uh, border all around the ears. So with the pink, I'm just gonna go, it was on the drawing. If you, did, if you just hand drew it, just refer to the drawing and you can see where the inside of the ears, this is such a light pink. Can you see there the pink? We're just gonna go inside here. Remembering what I said, we're working in layers. So this is the first layer on the inside of our ear. 
We're going to do a little shading by adding a little darkness in it. You can see from the finished picture that we're going to give it a little, a little bit of a three-dimensional look because once we have the light colored pink in here, we're going to put in a little shadow. Just whatever's dark moves away from you. So once we put a little dark around the edge of our ears, that's going to move away, which is going to make our ears of our bunny look a little three-dimensional instead of just flat. So while my pink is still wet, I'm going to do both ears. And you can see that the left ear here, as you look at your bunny, is folded over on the top. So it's not going to be the same shape as the right ear. You can see how I put painted the pink inside there. And then we have the pink is longer on this side. So once I have the pink of the ears, the inside of the ears, my first coat done, I'm going to wash my brush in the water. I'm going to be using this size brush for a lot of my rabbit. So I've washed my brush, pat it off. I still have white on my palette. I'm going now for a gray. So like red being very powerful, black also is very powerful. So a little black goes a long ways. So to start with, with black, I want you to make what you would consider a light gray. I want you to, to try to uh, see the difference in the value. So if this is my light gray, Later on, I'm going to be using a medium gray and a dark gray, which means I'll be adding more black to it. But here I have my light gray. It's still quite gray. What really makes this little bunny pop, at the very end, we're going to add the crazy hair all these little fur things and it's white so we want we're laying we're laying the colors down by by values so that white will be the last highlight that we put on so now with and it shows this in your um instructions now we're going to go in here and we're going to paint the gray around the ears Okay, so I've got gray on my brush. We need to slow down just a little bit. Again, okay. Lori. See, it's hard be when Lori's not here with us because <laughs> it comes so naturally to her. She just can keep going. Some of us are beginners, Lori. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but in doing this too, and in all the art that I have taught, People, people have a tendency to want to be very slow and very tedious and very precise at this point. And that is not what needs to happen at this point in our painting. We are just laying down the base coats. So it's like you, you put them on there and don't worry if you can still see, like when I first lay, when I first lay this gray down, I can see a sum of my turquoise underneath it, not to worry about it. There's probably going to be five layers of paint on the edge of this ear by the time I'm done. So that's why I have to remind ourselves to loosen up on our paintbrush and take a deep breath. And so that we can have a 
so you don't feel stressed out, so you can have an enjoyable time period. If you find yourself choking up on the brush, one thing you can do is move your fingers farther up the brush handle. That will make your paint, your, your strokes looser than when you're down here. It's very hard to get very long strokes because you're so choked up on the end of the brush. So if you move your hand up farther up the brush, once you have your gray paint on, it's easier, I think it's easier for you then to draw the gray line going all the way out in a, in a smooth, loose line, rather than being so tight here that you're working in such a tight, cramped space. I don't know if that makes sense, but it just loosen up a little bit. And don't be afraid, you've got your bunny drawn on there, so don't be afraid to turn your, to turn your canvas around. It also will be more enjoyable for you. If, like I'm right-handed, so I, I like to paint towards myself. I find that easiest for me to stroke towards myself then off to a side, it's, it's really awkward. And so I just keep turning my canvas so that my right arm and my right hand are always in the most comfortable spot. So for example, I'm here on the, as you're looking at it, the little bunny's little left ear, but I have to make this turn. And like I said, it's easy for me I like to paint towards myself. So as I put my gray color down here and I get to this corner, rather than trying to paint off to the, to the right, I'm just gonna turn my canvas so that I am still coming down towards myself in strokes. The background is all dry. And so I also try to use my little finger. If any of you played pool, <laughs> you know how you brace your finger and have the pool cue and you have your fingers on the, on the pool table. I do the same thing with painting. I brace my fingers. I brace my fingers on my canvas so that my hand is always like balanced on my canvas. And then I can lay my paint down. Again, I like to come towards myself. So I'm trying to turn this so the light sits it. This is, um, we are getting for our loose, our, our, we are warming up here. Everybody just think of that this is a, a loosening up, warming up part of our painting. So we've got this done. How, how are they doing on their ears? How are we doing? Everybody feeling like your ears are good? Are you getting there? Awesome. Okay, I'm hoping that the ones that are doing it, Doing it online, or nobody has said they're having problems. Nope, nobody said anything in the chat. Awesome. They're pros by now if they've been painting with you for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody feel pretty caught up to where we are? You got your ears pretty close? Just maybe just a little minute more, and then we'll be good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna deviate a little bit from the from the 
instructions. And out. Just to enable the paint to dry a little more, make sure it's drying. So I know in the handout, I say to go in and start adding the shade, the shading on the ears, but we're gonna go down and start adding the bunny's face, putting the first layer on the bunny's face. I kind of feel like everybody needs this to, to get them loosened up. With the bunny's face, we're going to be putting on layers. So we're going to be starting with our, our lightish gray color. And we're going to be doing some mixing right on our canvas. And because we're doing that, and because acrylic paint dries quickly, you need to paint while it's still wet so that you can blend it. So I have this, um, my brush is actually a flat number 12 block brush. I'm just going to, I'm not going to use strokes on his face. And don't worry about, we're going to paint the whole thing gray. Like you can see on your directions. We're going to get this, some of this texture. Our, our focus tonight is on texture to try to make the bunny look soft and furry and crazy. And so we are going to paint his eyes on top of, of this fur on his face. So don't worry about, oh, I'm painting over where his eyes are or how are his eyes going to fit in there. We're just going to paint the whole thing flat. So I'm hoping everybody's ready to go. I am. Um, I had to mix up a little bit more of my lighter gray because it was getting dry and I'd used it up what I had. So now I have my brushes loaded with paint. And instead of strokes, I'm just going to start randomly putting splotches. I am just bouncing my brush on my rabbit. Can you see how I'm just taking, you're actually, instead of holding it like a pencil like this, you're holding it more 90 degrees to your canvas and you're just pushing it down, lifting it up, pushing it down, lifting it up. And so I'm going to add little splotches here of color. Picking up some more paint, adding some more splotches. <clears throat> so I'm kind of just bouncing my brush. So what I'm doing is I'm putting paint on my brush and I'm taking it to my canvas. I'm holding my brush a little bit more at a 90 degree angle instead of like a pencil, a 90 degree angle. And I'm pushing it down, lifting it up, pushing it down, lifting it up. So I'm just getting splotches of gray and I'm turning my brush randomly. And while my, while my gray paint is still wet, I'm gonna mix in a little bit more black and I'm just gonna start splotching it on. And it's mixing right on my canvas. And if you, don't worry because if you put, if you put, to, I'll just show you an example, okay? The opposite of what I just <laughs> So if I have black on my brush and I put it down and I'm like, ah, here, let me do it more. Oh, that's too black, ah, I ruined my painting. Not so. You just get some white paint on your brush and you just keep mixing it right on there. And we are going to give it a little dimension here. So I'm going to first just kind of get some medium gray put on my bunny's face.
Okay. And I do want to, if you if you look at your direction sheet, you see how there's in order to see value, it's really easy if you just squint your eyes as tight as till till you can't see detail anymore. All you can see is value change. So if you squint your eyes at the direction sheet you'll see that there's a dark dark value right here around its little like muzzle, its little nose area, little front of its face. We're looking at a we're looking at a rabbit straight on. If we were looking at it from the side, their little heads are shaped kind of like an egg. But when we're looking at it straight on in order to make it look like the front where his little nose is going to be is protruding. The way we get this to protrude is to make some darkness behind it. Because remember, dark moves away from you, light comes towards you, to your vision. So we want to create a little darkness right here, as you can see here. So while I still have my gray here going, I'm gonna start putting in a little bit darker. I'm just, I, I am not wiping my brush. I'm not cleaning my brush. I'm just adding more paint to it. So right now I'm just adding, a, I'm just pulling here. I'm just pulling some of this black out. There's the pure black and I'm just pulling it into the gray that I've made. And I'm letting it mix on my canvas. So I just create a little, little splotchy darkness. If I squint my eyes at it, I should see it's a little bit darker right through there. And not to worry if it's totally not because we're gonna add more white in this area. So without washing my brush, I'm just taking my brush and wiping it on the paper towel to get some of the darkness off, but not cleaning it with water. So now I'm gonna just pick up white and add a little bit of white And again, I'm just bouncing my brush. And I can add a little bit of white down here just to make his nose part come, come out a little bit. And maybe to you, it doesn't look right at all. So try to not think it's supposed to look like a bunny right now because it doesn't. It might look like a bunny's behind but it certainly doesn't look like a bunny's face. <laughs> but right now we're just trying to get some value in here. Some lightness here, a little lightness on the forehead. His face is also going to grow and be wider, as you can see by the finished picture. And then at this point, I am going to... No, I'm not going to um, clean my brush. I'm just going to wipe it off because all it has is white and black, white and gray on it. I'm just going to wipe it off on the paper towel. They have burnt umber, right? Brown? Yes, we do. Yep, okay. we've got burnt umber. Okay. We're going to go back to shading our ears. So we're going to use a little brown. So in preparation for the next step, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to mix up a little more pink because my pink is all dry. So I, I mixed up some fresh pink. 
Am I okay, Wendy, to move on? Not quite. Okay. How are the girls doing on video? Everybody on Zoom doing okay? It's so hard to not be able to walk around and see where they're I at. Know. <laughs> so you're gonna need a little bit of brown on your palette. That's where we're going next. And then you can mix also a little bit of pink. Yeah, not mix yet. Your, mix Just, the, you can make a tiny bit more pink, but you're gonna need a little bit of brown on your palette too. That's where we're going next, whenever we're ready to move on to the next step. Sorry, most of the paint that we have is very full bodied because when I started buying paint for paint nights at the library, the very first one we did was um, Van Gogh's Starry Night. We did like a replica of Van Gogh's Starry Night. So I was like, oh, I need super heavy bodied paint. And now I have very heavy bodied paint because I bought a bunch of it because I was like, we're doing this paint night thing. So, so with that, they might need to dip up. their brush in water just to thin it a little bit. If it's a little too and mostly they're just having a hard time like they don't want to scoop it out with their brushes so they're trying to dump it out of their cups onto their palette and it's you know hard to get use, out so full bodied use use the end of your paintbrush true you can use the it's, opposite end of your paintbrush to scoop it you, out and then use just wipe your, it off end of your paintbrush like a little palette knife to put it out because you can easily wipe this off with a paper towel no They're not going to need a lot of pink for this step, right? I just answered her without even asking. No, you. Like, no, no, like I'm the expert. No, look at my palette. I have a little tiny pile of poop right there. <laughs> <laughs> tiny bit of brown, little bit of pink. And fresh pink. So I am going to have pink on my brush. That pink on my brush right now. And I'm gonna take the corner of my brush and dip it in the brown. Yeah. I mean, if you don't want to be So can you see oh. that my brush has pink on it? Do it over the blue. So my brush has pink and then I've dipped one corner in the brown. The corner that has the brown in it is what I am going to, that's the shade. The shade. So I'm going to just come along my ear and that little corner that had the brown is what I'm dragging next to the gray. And because the rest of my brush has pink in it, I'm gonna get this nice- You want it to shadow, but not, just relax. Don't be picky about any of it. Yeah. <laughs> They're so asking, I is this something it, we should be more picky about? I'm no, like, no, see how that, if I took my brush and I have pink on it, and then I come over here and I dip the corner in brown. So see how the corner of my brush just has the brown on it? The rest of my brush has pink. So I'm going to come around to this ear because I want my shadow to be on the inside here. Whoops, this inside edge right here is what I want to be shadowed. So I'm gonna turn this. So my brown is next to the gray and I'm just drawing a line down here. And I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper towel and come back and get more pink. And I'm just gonna come in here with my pink and mix that on top of my brown, just to soften it a little bit. I'll do the same with this one on this side. Cause see, I kind of have a strip. See how I have the shade and then I have this strip. Well, I wanna get rid of that line there. I'm just gonna mix some pink on it. The other part of the ears that we want shaded is right here where the ear goes, goes into his head. 
right? As you were looking at the bunny, that would be the deepest part of his ear. That's going away from you, right? See his little how it's shaded right here where it goes in and on the and on the other one. So I'm gonna take a little brown on my brush. A little brown down here, right next to the where it's coming up out of his scalp. And like, oh, that's a little too dark. Not a problem. I'm going to take, I'm not washing my brush in between. I'm just wiping the color off on my paper towel. Picking up some more of my pink. And blending that onto the brown. If I do it quick enough, I can actually blend it with the brown, but it don't matter. See how that just softened it? And there is going to be so many layers of paint here by the time we get done that all your little discrepancies that you think are discrepancies right now aren't even going to show. So we're just added a little bit of brown there along the along the base of the ear, along the, the inner part of the ear. And remember, dark moves away from you, light comes towards you. So now I've taken, wiped my brush on my paper towel. I'm just going to pick up some white, just white and blend a little bit of white right in the middle of my ear. Wipe it off on my paper towel. Looks like I have too much. And I'm just smoothing that white. I don't know if you can see, there's a little highlight right here. A little highlight right here. Yeah, you can see more of the value on this one. But look at the finished one. See how all his little crazy hair, when we add that on there and stuff, that's going to be all covering that up and just blending that in. So again, just remember we're, we're he looks very he looks very plain right now compared to this one. This one got a crew cut. <laughs> so if you're following along on me, let's go back and read the directions. When all else fails, we read the directions. So we went back to, we went to step seven, then we went back to six, which was to paint his ears with pink in the, in the brown and white. Okay, so you guys get all to that spot and then our next step is going to be his eyes. And so, when you're done painting a little a little shading on his ears, go back to your water cup. This might be where they might need some fresh water, Wendy and Camille, we because it's we can the water might be pretty muddy with their background color and the gray. I'm gonna go get fresh water and I'll be back. Yeah. If you want to, yeah, I was going to say, grab a drink of water over there and then I'll do that. So, as you can tell, our next step. Once you get your ears shaded, is going to be to paint his eyes. Mm 
Except for his ears being backwards, this more or less looks like the back end of a bunny. Like I could put a cottontail right there and that would be a bunny <laughs> facing away from me, but his ears are turned back towards me. <laughs> Just take the top angle and the back. Other than my ears, they shine out. Any else need water? Fresh water? Are we ready to move on to the eyes? <laughs> How are you doing? Wendy, what size of, of small brushes do they have? So they have either a number six or a number eight round, and then they have a um a one or a two round two. Okay. So, that's so I, I have a number six. Or it doesn't it matter. Six? six or eight. We're going to go to our round brush. And we're going to, and it's going to all be done with black. I know in the directions it says small brush. That's this one. Uh, paint eyes one with have, black, kind of white, dark gray, one. and pink. And we're going to do that in different areas. So right now we're going to go straight black. And in order to make it, Move easily, we're going to add water. And the way we do that is we are going to dip your brush in your water first, and then dip it in the black. You might even need another brush load of water because we want to be able to draw a line with it. So I've got my black here and I've for mine, I've added, my black's been drying a little bit here, so I've added two brush loads of water. And I'm going to drag, I'm going to drag my brush and roll it at the same time. So I'm dragging it and twisting it at the same time, which is going to give it a nice point. Okay. Now I'm going to look at my bunny's face. Remember how you started out with a rainbow arch right here? Where the narrower part of his head met his little fat muzzle here, his little fat face. So I'm going to go to where that curve was. If I were to take, if I were to go back to the drawing, this is the line I want right here. So where, where this line was, this is actually what I'm going to draw to put his eyes in. So if everybody just wants to watch me first, I roll my brush in the black. I go up here, go to where that arch was, and I'm going to draw a curve. And then I'm going to go over to the other side, and I'm going to draw the curve. And the curve is going to end about halfway through an ear. So if I did a if I did a vertical line from this point up, it would go about into the middle of my ear. Okay. So I've drawn that. So everybody draw two two small arches like that. Remember what you're looking for is this, this line right here. So you're going to draw it to about halfway in the ear. 
Go to the other side, draw about halfway on the ear, make that little curve. Okay. Then everybody watch where I go with the next line. Okay, this is gonna give the definition to my eye. So here's the bottom of my ear. I want to go down about a quarter of an inch from the bottom of my ear. And I'm gonna, if you want, you can put a dot there. And I'm gonna go from that dot and make a curve that's gonna end right there. So I'm gonna go that and do the same thing on the other side, about a quarter of an inch down from my ear and aim towards the end of that arch. Here, I'll show you the finished eye so you can see where you're going to. Okay, so here's the finished eye. So I've done this little cheek line here. And then I've come up here about a quarter inch below my ear and I've made another little arch down to this point. And now I'm going to paint a very large almond here. So I'm going to start with my outside one. Don't worry about this gray head that you painted here. Wipe it from your memory. <laughs> so I'm going to come in a little bit from the line and I'm going to draw a curve and a curve. I do want to leave just a little teeny triangle right there on the inner part of the eye. Thank goodness we're not God and we don't have to create these animals because I never can get both eyes exactly the same. <laughs> but we can try. Hey, Lori. Yeah. Uh, on our end, for some reason, all of a sudden on the TV, it looks pixelated. It looks fine on my computer, but can we pause for just a second? Just I want to try and unplug my HDMI cord and replug it back in and see if sure. I can fix the pixelations. Was that scary? Everything looks clear from my end, even your face and stuff. Hey, so. hey that worked. Okay. So okay. once you have drawn, once you have drawn these little, these large almond shapes in here and left just a tiny little corner here, you can go back now with full black. It doesn't have to be watered down. And you're just going to fill this whole circle, this whole almond shape in. Remember I told you not to worry? Look at all that gray mixing that you were so worried about. Now you're painting all the way over it. See, it was all for naught. So I'm filling in my eyes, which is gonna look very scary because they're not gonna look like they're, they're ovals. They're not gonna look like a dome shape. That'll come when we highlight. Again, I find it easiest. Here's my little finger bracing, bracing my hand on my canvas so that I have a steadier hand. This is looking like a zombie rabbit. <laughs> Go ahead and wash your black brush when you're done in your water. Get it nice and clean. Get all the black out of it.
How are the eyeballs looking? Wendy, you're muted. You're muted. I know I keep muting myself so that if people are <laughs> How are their talking eyeballs to me, looking? that we're not interrupting you while you're still talking. No. Eyeballs are looking good. Yep. Yeah, a couple people just need a second. The rest of them can be mixing a little pink. We're going back to pink now. So a little white, a little red. A little bit more white. Want we want this to be a very, very light pink. I have just a very, very light pink on my brush. Tiny bit of red in your white. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be painting these two little triangles on the inner part of the eye. So. You need to make sure that his pupil is dry so you don't mix it. So I'll get the black. You have to blow on it or something. My, the middle around. part of my pupils are still wet, but right along the edge are dry. So I can go back now with my pink. And I'm just going to paint these little inner, inner triangles with the very tip of my brush. Pink. <laughs> Super light pink, like the tiniest bit of red in your in your yeah, white. It's yeah. very light. It looks white from here, but it is a little little bit pink, just not as pink as the ears. Then while that's drying, go back to your medium brush. That's why she's like, um, anchor your pinky while you're trying to do it. Yeah, to steady your hand steady with it. it. We're going to we're going to use this very light pink that you have made here. Here was my one pink for the ears and you can't even hardly tell I got pink here. It's a very very light one. But while I have it wet and it's slightly pink with my medium brush, remember the pouncing that we did on his face right around where I'm going to be putting his nose and his mouth. Let me just get this right around here where I'm going to paint his little nose and mouth. I'm going to add just a little hint of this light pink. I put some on, wipe my brush on a paper towel, go back and wipe it here. No, it's super light pink. Yep, Super same one they used in the corners. And if it if it's too stark, you can make a little gray. So I have a little gray here just to tone it down just a little bit. <laughs> See, if you hadn't done the eyes, you could have just made it the back end. Been done right now. Just yeah, that would be like his cotton cotton tail. <laughs> So Except I washed off my brush because I'm not going to use this right now. And I'm going back to my small brush that I painted his eyes with. Go so back to the purple or green, whichever one you have. Mm -hmm. And make yourself some gray. You remember how to make the gray with the white and the black. Tiny bit of black. I have small white. Little gray. Sometimes you have to have a I'm rolling my brush like I did with it when it was black. I'm going to come in here next to the pupil and I'm going to start adding some gray fur. I'm just using the tips of my a tip of my brush and I'm kind of dragging it out like a little fur around his eye. 
And also with that gray, I'm going to come in here from the center. If you watch from the from the inside corner of his eye, I'm making little fur strokes, little lines, and I'm bringing that up. around his eye and I'm going to do that on both sides. I'm actually turning mine upside down, but anyway. And this is with my with my light gray. And here along his pupil. And I'm and I'm taking and I am. If you want to, you can put your brush in some water, roll it in that gray, roll it out to a point, and just start adding some little fur strokes going up his middle part of his forehead here. And she did a little bit on the outside of the eyes too. I don't know if you guys were. A little bit on the outside of the eyes. Uh -huh. Everybody doing okay? Good. Then I'm gonna take and make, I, I still have gray on my brush. I haven't even wiped it on the paper towel. I'm adding a little black, a little bit more black to it. So I have a dark color, roll it to a point. I'm going to create some little eyelashes off of this top part of his eye. That was with a darker gray. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. This is a very light touch. I'm bracing my hand on my canvas holding my brush almost so it's perpendicular, 90 degrees. And I'm just adding some light. You're gonna be doing this a lot. Some light little eyelashes. And you could probably use either of your round brushes mm -hmm. for that. If you would like to use a small one, one, you can. One. He's starting to take shape now. So at this point, I would. What time are we supposed to finish? Um, well, usually like eight by uh, eight thirty. Yeah. Okay, we're good. Eight and eight thirty. We're good. You're good. Once once I have added a little eyelashes up here at the top, and don't worry that this looks funny or crappy right here. It doesn't. Because let me show you the finished one. You see, we're going to come back with when we're doing our white crazy hair and we add little tufts of white fur along there and that will get rid of that. Ooh, that just looks like a gray stripe there. Okay. He still looks like he has zombie eyes because they're not dimensional. So wash your, wash your brush. I'm going to just keep using my number six brush. If you want to change brushes, you can. We're gonna add the highlight to his eye. So I have a clean brush and I'm going to go find a spot if I have it here of just solid white. So I'm going to tip the, put the end of my brush in the paint and load up the tip of my brush with white. Which brush? The small round one. The highlight in his eye is like an elongated raindrop. So see how this is right here? Everybody look up here at the camera. <laughs> One, two, three, eyes on me. Okay. 
<laughs> so I have white, I have loaded the tip of my brush in white. I'm going to turn my brush so that it is 90 degrees. And I'm going to set it down on my black pupil and I'm going to gently press, which is going to make it have a thicker line. And then as I draw out this little backward C slash here, I'm going to lift the pressure off my brush and that will give it this nice little thickness here and, and it comes off at the end. So here's my zombie eyes that are just flat. Okay, and I've been talking in my... Okay. So I have a lot of white on my paintbrush. I'm gonna go here to the outside edge. I'm gonna tip, I'm gonna put my brush down Push it down, drag it, and lift. Actually, I want it to be a little longer, so I'm going to drag it a little longer and lift. Okay. Oh. This I can't tip, I can't um, turn my canvas to do this one. I have to just move my hand over. And about the same area, I'm holding my brush 90 degrees. Not like a pencil flat like this, you'll get too much paint. I want to tip it in my hand, put it down, press it, draw it out and lift it up. Now I'm going to take and just dab my brush a little bit on my paper towel so it's not quite so much paint. And I'm going to do a second one. on the inside. So you can see that my brush was loaded when I made my first little highlight. Then I wiped my brush on the paper towel just a little bit. So I still have paint on it, but not so much to make a second little highlight. Now his eyes are looking a lot better. So you can just wipe your brush on the paper towel because all it has is white on it. And we want to go back to pink. So now all my pink is dry. I have to remix it. We're going to do the nose now. And the nose is a little bit darker pink. So probably at least as dark as your inside of your ears were. Same thing. I mixed a little of my pink. I rolled my brush so I have a nice little point to it. Now you might think his nose is supposed to go up here, but this is his little muzzle. His nose is gonna go right here at the top of this highlighted section. And his nose is the shape of a V, kind of like what you just did with the eyes. I've got pink on my brush. I'm going to push it down so it's thick, lift it up, Push it down, lift it up. See if you can see that. There, yeah. the little pink nose. I know you guys in Utah have had a lot of snow. We're like on to six and a half months of winter up here. Montana. Yeah, same. The air is so dry. I think that's also why my paint's drying so fast. So from this, Little V, I'm going to make a line straight down. And actually, let me draw you what he's what is it's going to look like. Let me see. What, what do I have? Where's... So like a pink that's a little darker, about the same pink as the ears, or a little darker. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to just draw you what we what you're what you're drawing for his nose. His nose is made, it's about, it's a little more than a quarter of an inch. And it's a little V. And then you come down to divide up his little cheeks, I guess you call them. And then we have a flat triangle. So this is the shape you're drawn with pink. All in that pink for now, yeah. Okay, does everybody see that? This is his little nose 
which actually is shaped more like like the highlights in his eyes where you push down on the brush and then you lift it up. So it's more of that shape. And then you come down with a little pink line about quarter of an inch. And then you make a little, this flat triangle here. And that's what you're doing with pink. Everybody getting there? Roll your shoulders. Take the a first breath. Time that I, the first time I did this, I thought, well, but that bottom part makes it look like he's frowning. But we're going to make it look like he's got a little pink lip and his mouth is going to be open. We really can't see that pink on there on the camera. I'm going to hold it up here closer. <clears throat> there we go. Yeah. See it? Yep. And then you can just wipe off your pink and if your black if your brown is still hopefully just a little bit wet, you can mix brown and the little pink together, get a get a pinkish dark brown. And that's what you're going to fill in. Will you show your palette where you mix that, Lori, to show what color that is? So just a little bit of brown into the pink. So I put a little bit of brown with the pink that I had for his lips. And now I'm just putting that inside this little, remember you like, drew that, that flattened triangle? And, and move your palette up or your oh, yeah. canvas up a little bit. Thanks. So fill I'm in the middle kind of sideways. with it of the bottom triangle. Yeah. I'm gonna, my brown is so tough from sitting here. I, I have to see put where a you're little painting. bit of water in it. Let me tip this out like this so I can. There we it. go. Okay, so I put a little brown in here. I'm gonna put a little brown down one side of the, his little where his lips are split. And underneath this top part, I'm gonna put two little nostrils. Let me see if I can get that. So underneath the top lines of pink to the right of the line down the middle and then inside the triangle at the bottom. Mm -hmm. ah. I have to go back to my pink. I have to cover up. He looks like a snaggle tooth. <laughs> that is the great thing about acrylics. You can pretty much always hide any. Yeah. Anything so see how cute his little mouth looks now. That looks cute. He doesn't look like he's frowning. <laughs> okay. Take a deep breath. We are going to do his little friend that's also sitting. I just his noticed when she's showing it to you up close, like. It doesn't look like much. So when you're in the details of your painting, sometimes you're looking at the minute details and that's all you can see. But then look when she pushes it away a little bit, you're like, oh yeah, no, that totally looks like a nose and a mouth now. So don't- You gotta hold it at arm's reach. You Art looks a lot way. better at arm's reach. Maybe an overnight <laughs> to look at it in the morning and then you'll love it. There's the finished one too that I have. See, he's gonna have- He's gonna have fur all around that and little whiskers. So that's gonna be kind of put in place there. How are we doing? Everybody doing okay on their mouth and nose? Is it feeling scary? It's really, okay. Are they done with their mouth and nose? How are we doing? Raise your hand if you need a few more seconds. Okay. <laughs> Just a, just a few, just a little bit longer. Okay. We're going to let all this dry and we're going to go make our little chick that's sitting between his ears next. I got an oh dear from that. Oh dear? 
Oh dear. <laughs> oh, you're also loosened up now. Lucy Goosey, you can quit little chicky friend. He's also having a bad, bad hair day. Did you notice that? We're gonna put we're gonna put little feathers that are wacko on him. He looks a little grumpy. Yep. He's got he his mouth like open. Do I have to sit on this yelling. rabbit's head again? <laughs> Don't the eyes look cute? I think they turned out so cute. Yeah, the eyes do look cute. Eyes. I love how they, they turn from being flat zombie eyes to being round black almonds. Totally. All right, everybody we're, good? We're on step 10 of 15, so we are moving right along. We're good. They're finally loosening up a little bit. It was silent in here for so long. I know. Everybody's so now worried. they're like, okay. You're so worried. And it'll always look a hundred times better in the morning when right. you look at it in the morning. Like those that have kids, the kids will get up and go, oh, I can't believe you did that, mother. I saw there were a lot of men there tonight. Must be having date night. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go with my medium brush, the, the 12 that I had, the 12 flat that I had. Now I'm gonna put out yellow. If, you, if your red that's on your palette is dry, put out another little gob of red. Red and yellow make orange. We're gonna be shading with a little orange. Um, you can see his colors there. She's like, I'll take it. Yeah, she will. She will. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yellow and red. Are we ready? Are we ready to go on to the chick? No. Boom, boom. No. So what color? No. no. What the heck? I'll show this again. This was the shape of the little nose and the mouth. Then the pink with a little bit of burnt umber on it to give it a little more detail. Once again, ready? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, we just were. People needed. Uh, where their palettes were full, so we handed out more palettes, so okay. that they had to make their orange. I know. I I put. I brought a second plate in case I ran out. So then we had a water spill. Oh. Uh -huh. I had an exploding Diet Coke spill this morning. Oh no. I put Diet Coke in a, in a metal water bottle with ice. And when I went to, later when I went to flip open the straw to, to drink it, it came out of there like a volcano. It Just hit me in the face, there. the hair, <laughs> it dripped off the ceiling. It was horrible. Funny. Okay, so I have yellow, red, white. So I'm gonna scoop up some white and I'm gonna make a, a little pale yellow first. So I have a little bit of a pale yellow. I'm just going to imagine where he's at here. 
he looks like a snowman, you know, two, two circles. So for this size, I'm going to put him here. Um, if I was to guess, I'd say that's about the shape of size of a quarter. And then up here, I'm going to give him a little head. And he's going to be trying to hold himself onto this rabbit's head. So off here, I'm going to give him a little wing. He's kind of trying to balance himself a little bit. Now, this is like, like elsewhere on the rabbit. I can still see my background color through him. This is the first layer. So no, I, I leave that on there. And I let that dry on there. So I'm going to rin rinse off my brush. Pat it on my paper towel, set it aside. I am going to go to the smallest brush you have. I have a zero. I think you guys have a one. A very small brush. And with my very small brush, I'm dipping it in some water. I'm going to make a little orange. So I'm taking a bit of yellow, a bit of red, make a make an orange. Yeah, maybe none of the settings have it in there right now. Usually I can turn these off and leave those off and bold. And that makes it easier to see that. So I added a touch of burnt umber to my orange. So I have a brownish orange. And I'm going to roll my tiny brush so it has a very small tip. And I'm going to give him some little feet while his body is drying. I'm going to put some little toes on him. Okay. okay. So over here, I'm going to draw a little foot sticking out. And little, little chickens have a long toe in the back. And then they have four, four little toes here in the front. It looks like a little star. So he's got one foot there. And I'm going to give him another little foot kind of stretched out here. The long, long toe in the back. Short toes on the side. Okay. And just to give a little dimension to that, I haven't I haven't cleaned my brush at all. I've just gone back and rolled it in some of the burnt umber. Actually, it's so sticky, I do have to put a little water on it. The brown. <laughs> So with my with my burnt umber here, here's his here's his little toe. And to dark to shadow the toes. Yep, I'm just going to give a little shadow. Just add a little, just a little bit of dimension on his foot. Now we got serious again. The feet apparently are scary. The feet are scary. <laughs> and the little chicken is just varying shades of oranges. So I'm just mixing my reds and my yellows here. Tiny bit of red. Red is really overpowering. Picking up some of the orange colors. Now, 
I want to, I'm just using um, little like quarter inch strokes. If you can't, if you can't do quarter inch, if your brush is too dry, you can add a little water to it so that you can, so you can get these little lines. I'm just putting little feathers on him. My feathers are going outside of the yellow. They can Move your canvas down, down just a little bit, Lori. You're what? off the camera. The chick is off the camera. Can you move your canvas? Oh. There you go. I'm just putting some little. Hmm. If I want to add a little bit darker ones, then I'm just adding a little bit of brown. Of course, he's going to be a little bit darker down here around the bottom. Remember, the dark moves away from you. It's too dark, so I'm going to put some of my orange on top of it. I can spin my canvas around here to just give him little tiny feathers going all around the outside of his head so it's not just a not just a uh, round circle right give him a little halo yep yeah. oh i forgot i got to plug in my phone Anyway, you just keep adding little feathers on him like that. Varying shades of darker yellow and orange. How are we doing? <laughs> I forgot to plug in my phone on that finished one. Want to look at it? Hey, how are we doing with the chick? Good. How are you doing? Good? Feeling good about the chick? Yeah. They all look very studious about the chick. Yeah. I know I mine got a little too dark here, so I'm gonna add a little bit lighter on it. <laughs> The final thing, before I put his eyes and stuff in, I'm gonna come back and I've got white on my brush. So I'm doing very light, very um, light, I mean by uh, light pressure. See how I'm giving him little feathers like that that are really light. Resting my hand on my canvas so that I can steady my hand and just barely touch my, brush to the canvas. That's this, is his, this is his part of the crazy hair. <laughs> Give him some hair on his wings. This is where I need the Bob Ross voice. <laughs> what, is, what does your little chick have? He has a little feather sticking out of here.
He's really nuts, though. He looks like a porcupine. <laughs> I'd say I'm done. I'm going to put his eyes in. Actually, before I do his eyes, let's do his beak. So his beak is kind of a, is a, is an orange color. I'll draw what his beak shape is, too. So for his little beak, it's actually like a diamond. Oops, guess I gotta draw it darker, huh? It's like a diamond. And we're gonna put a little, a little darker brown line there. So it looks like his beak is open up. And instead of just a triangle, cause we're not looking at him from the side, we're looking straight on at him. So this is the shape. You're gonna paint orange. And then add a little brown line in the middle. So give him a little triangle and then a little triangle. So probably your tiniest detail brush to do that one. And I could let that dry just a little bit and bring in a little brown. For a little line in the middle. There, can you see it? It's kind of blurry. That's what his mouth looks like. And I have to put a little water on my brush and roll it in my in my burnt umber because now I'm going to do his eye. So to start off his eye, I do a little, a little circle. And another little circle. And he's got, and there's a little tiny point at the corner. Let me draw it. So his eye looks like this shape. A little circle, a little circle, doing those with brown. And then you add just a little point on the inside. And to finish them off, we're going to wipe off the brown on your brush and pick up straight white because this is the little highlight. And it's just a tiny little dot of white in the center of his eye. Ah, look at him. <laughs> okay, we are on to the finishing part. How are we doing? Everybody good? You've got your crazy little chicken there. What are we working on? Still working on eyes? Still working on feathers? Beak. Okay. <laughs> it's true because then you kind of look at the whole thing instead of the detail of it that you're in when you're actually painting it you know hold it at arm's reach and squint your eyes so all you see is value <laughs> and then you're like oh it's amazing <laughs> and if that doesn't work in the morning you'll like it a lot better Okay, how are we going yeah. to get 
from this to this. Dun, 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 dun. So before we do that, before we do the white, we need to do one more uh, coating on the background. Remember, we were going to do one more coating on the background. Because if your if your background looks like mine, it's very uh, splotchy. So I'm going back with my bigger brush, mixing up my turquoise. And I'm going to go back with, I like doing like X's. And I'm going to paint a second coat on. Don't need to, now you shouldn't, now you should be to the point. You're not too worried about the edge of the ear, even if you are using a big brush. Just kind of go around his eyelashes a little bit because you're going to be putting white fur on that anyway. So. So I'm just laying down some more turquoise. I decided to go a little lighter this time. I have a little more white in it. Nice springtime sky that we haven't seen yet, really. Yeah. <laughs> it's all been gray here. Yep, it was rainy and gray today. What? Uh, how much snow have you got on the ground? You still That's have snow really on the ground? On the ground, because it keeps kind of warming up to like 40 degrees and then kind of melting it all. But then, I mean, in the middle of this morning, it looked fine. And then it blizzarded for a while, like blue yeah. and snowed like crazy. And then it warmed up a little bit and then it rained. Then it snowed. Yeah. And then I was here, so I don't know, but <laughs> it's, it's been off and on kind of. Well, we're headed to Spokane tomorrow to drive to Spokane, Washington, which is three hours from us for the day. So we're hoping that we don't have bad roads. Is there a mountain pass between you guys and Spokane? Oh, yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. I'm just kind of splotching here around my little, around my little bird because I'm going to be putting white here. See how I'm going to be adding white in there so I'm not too worried about getting my my background color all the way all the way in there where I want it. I'm just doing this to give my background a little bit so it's not so splotchy. A little bit of dimension in there. I mean you could still I could still see the canvas through my through my background here. I'm almost kind of scrubbing the brush along my rabbit. Again, the white is going to be covering that up, so I'm not yeah. Oh, yeah. worried about that. I hope by this time, everybody can see, maybe can understand a little bit more how at the beginning I said not to let it just be loose and go with it because you got layers and layers to go. So it looks lighter now. It'll dry a little darker as it goes, but that looks good to me. Ah! All right, can I snag a little bit more white? Yes. <laughs> Okay, I have to put some more white on my palette. This last part that we're going to do, you need to have a lot of, of white available. And for those of you that are online, gosh, they're still online. Some of them, I know it's getting very late for them. <laughs> those of you at home that are painting, these are the brushes you can use to uh, give it that wild hair look. You want a bristle brush, like an old brush, one that's like all frayed out. 
this looks like a little broom. See this one? Or you can use a um, fan brush. Um, I can even use my, uh, my other bristle brush that I use to paint the background. It's a little bit smaller in diameter. So for the last part here, we want to have white available and take one of your smaller brushes and mix up a little spot of gray. All my gray is, I don't know, I might need, a, I need another touch of black. Um, you want to have a, a light colored gray and white. So I'm taking here and I'm mixing up a little gray. So on my palette, I have a spot of gray and I have a spot of pure white. And Wendy, if they if they needed for this last one, they need to have a paper towel that they can wipe their brush on. Okay. So if their paper towel is real yucky, they they might need a, a new piece of paper towel. Okay, I'm going to use my fan brush. You can see how how sparse it is. You can do the same thing with one of your bristle brushes. The idea is we're not going to load the paintbrush. So I have my gray here. I'm gonna get gray on the end of the bristles. This is what it looks like. If you feel like the one that you have is too big too, if you would rather have a littler one. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the direction of his fur. So on his ear here, I'm going to put my brush down and lift it up. So I am just getting pieces of hair like that. Okay, I'm coming off the top. And actually, it works out better if you hold your brush farther down the handle and you're just lifting it up. Down here on the bottom of his ear, I'm going to be going up. Might have to dip a little more. So I'm putting it on that gray that we drew around the pink on his ears. That's where my brush is first starting and then I'm just flicking it out. And right now I'm working with a light gray. So I'm coming here on the gray that I, drew, that I painted and just flicking it out coming along his ear, going the direction of the point of his ear. When I get to this part of his ear, I'm going to come up with it. When I come around his eye, we're getting, it's like, it's like little feather. It's not feathers, you know. Long little pieces. Again, right now we're doing gray because that's going to be the undercoat. We'll put the white on as the highlight. So can you see how I went around his eyes? Remember how that, that gray was just like a strip around his eyes? Well, now I've added some long fur on it. I can also take this gray 
and come up. inside there and now we're going to look see how his muzzle his little muzzle is we're just going to come from his nose from his nose and come out and this is where i this is where i am bringing his the bottom of his face wider than what we drew it. It's the little, it's the little long fur. And it's coming by flicking it. So I'm putting my brush down and flicking it out. Which still he doesn't look that good right now. But when I add the pure white onto this gray, it's gonna just make it pop. So now I'm gonna go back. I can even wash my brush if I want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this one. Actually, most of you have the fan one, so I'll stay with the fan. I'm going to dry it. I'm going to dip it in white. So see how my fan brush is dipped in white? That's too much paint. So I need to wipe it gently on my... You'll see when you wipe it on your paper towel. See how it's going to paint? Light little strokes like that. I'm gonna go back over just everything that I've done. So I start here on his ear, and now I'm adding these white. See how cute that looks? Because we did it first with gray, we have a little undertone there. Wipe it on your paper towel so you're sure it's not gonna come off globby. Wendy, make it some white. Absolutely. So you can just go crazy with this. See how that see how that works with the white? I mean, he can just start getting bigger and bigger and bigger hair. He looks like he's from the 80s. Yeah, boy. Yeah. My uh, my girls, not I have three daughters. They're not all quite forty, but they're close. And <laughs> there was a time during the eighties where we actually have it on family video, where the girls had their dad take a tape measure and measure how tall their bangs were, because that was <laughs> that was really the style at the time. I had a I I had a hair salon. And so at the time, the girls would come in the hair salon in the morning and they would get ready for school by ratting up their bangs as tall as they could get. That was the cool thing to do. Ooh of course, we really laugh about it now. But anyway, this is what we're doing with our rabbit is we're just giving them all kinds of wild, crazy craziness. See that? Just flinging that out there. Remember how I told you not to worry about it when you were painting the pink and the gray because you're going to have so many layers. Well, now look here. We got our white. We got our white along there and you can hardly see the, the gray is just acting like a shadow down there. You just want to keep the direction. So his, his ears here, the fur is coming up and out to the right and flipping off. Down here, it's coming up. Down here on the ear, this is coming up. This is flipping off of the tip. His, his fur here between his eyes, if you want to do more with that, is going to be going up towards his little chicky friend. You're off camera, Lori. Whoops. Thanks. That's the direction that's going. 
And off on the direction of the fur on his cheeks is from his from his little nose out. So that's how you're getting that in his little eyes. Again, it's a really light touch. Like my, I, I actually am holding my, I'm holding my brush about halfway. I've got a very long, it's a 12 inch handle on, on this. All of our fan brushes are really long. Yeah. Like that too. So hold it up here. So it's loose in your hand and you're just, you're just barely touching your, you're just barely touching your, um, canvas canvas and that's what's gonna give it that little light those little light crazy hairs that's that's the name bad hair day but also remember our focus was texture so by not painting it solid by giving it all these little fuzzies off of it ones from his eyes come out like little eyelashes um that is giving us all this texture this nice texture now he doesn't look like a zombie huh <laughs> I mean, you can just keep going and going and going with this. Look at how cute that looks. The final thing to do is with your very fine brush, your very smallest little brush, really if you want to pick up some little watered down black, if you water it down, it will become gray. So just very gray light. You can go in here and you can add just a few little whiskers. If you wanted to add uh, some little whiskers there. I'm gonna come back with my black. I want to I want to make his eye a little solid here. I kind of went got a little crazy there with that white brush. I still want to be able to see the corner of his eye there. So I put a little black on it. <clears throat> and the very last thing we do is be grateful that we had the time together and somewhere on your painting put your initials and sign it and own it. This was what we did on <laughs> his last day at the American Fork Library where she goes on to her new experience. And like I say, it will look amazing to you in the morning. Uh, my suggestion always is to Set it somewhere tonight where you'll see it first thing in the morning, but you'll see it from about 10 feet away. <laughs> and you'll wake up and you'll see it. You're like, oh my gosh, that looks so amazing. So cute. Yeah, it's so cute. Who could I give that to for Easter? I'm mailing my, the one I painted here tonight, I'm going to mail to my grandkids in Denver as a little Easter surprise. <laughs> And I don't know, Wendy, are you still going to spray them or? Well, I have the stuff if people want to leave them. So if you're here and you would like for me to seal it with an acrylic sealant so that UV light protected and all of that and a little bit more water um, resistant, then I have a sealant spray here that I can spray it with if you want to leave it 
we can spray it and then you can come back and pick it up next week. I guess I'm making promises for Camille to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't take too much for us to do it. And then we'll just leave it at the desk upstairs. As long as your name is on it, if you're going to leave it, make sure your name's on the back of it and probably your phone number too, so that we um, can make sure you come back and get it, you know. Otherwise, we might hang it up in the library and put your name on it really big. I was hoping I like at the end of each paint class, I love to see because I don't get to be there to see your work. I love for people to come up and hold up their paintings so I can so I can see them. Yeah, if you guys wanna as soon as you're done, you can come up and hold it up so that Lori can see it. How's everybody at home? You guys have been pretty silent tonight. Yeah, we need to see some of the work from the at home Turn on people. Your cameras for a second. Show Lori your paintings. Everybody's still working, apparently. Yeah, putting the final touches still on. Finishing their hairs. <laughs> I'm glad I recorded this one tonight so I can put it on YouTube and do it myself. Mm-hmm. 